Hey everyone, chess.com daily puzzle, getting some today, it's 224, if you plus 2 and 2 you get 4, holy shenanigans, what am I, a numerologist all of a sudden, go click that button right there, let's get this daily puzzle started, shenanigans, alright, what do we got, we have wild and reckless crazy guys, alright, uh, queen to e8 check, forces the knight away, that is a deflection, and then rook to f8. What is the difference between attraction and deflection? Well, let me tell you. Attraction is when you sacrifice something to bring a piece to a specific square for a tactic against that specific piece. So you're, you're sacrificing something to bring the king to a square so that you can checkmate him on that square, which otherwise wouldn't be possible. Deflection is a sacrifice to remove a piece away from an area or square of the board so that a tactic is possible. Do the semantics of attraction and deflection really matter? No, they don't. But since I've made, you know, how many jokes, a, a number of jokes about my confused issues on attraction, I figure I'd clarify the definition. Uh, a decoy is somewhere in the middle. A decoy is specifically used to describe you're your distracting a piece, and a piece has to go and deal with this issue over there, even though it doesn't want to, and then, you know, an idea might be possible. A decoy could be like an outside pass pawn, which is a decoy to, to bring the king away in order to win on the other side of the boy, so, board. So I, I would define a decoy as um, a less concrete version of, of, of a deflection type of tactic. But anyway, how would you ever miss this puzzle? You would miss this puzzle if you didn't follow the hierarchy of how we talk about uh, considering moves in, in any tactical sequence. You have to first recognize what's weak in your opponent's position. Here we immediately recognize the queen and rook on the open files and the bishop on the uh, h6 f8 diagonal. And if you don't consider all checks, captures, and queen attacks, then you won't find the move. But if you start immediately considering those power moves, as we've called them, again, you'll solve it. And it sounds basic. And again, for the advanced players, they're saying, oh, no, Danny, we've heard this before. Well, I, I get it. But, you know, we're, we're trying to learn chess and grow together. And what's important is that... Um, each puzzle is explained to the level of understanding of that particular puzzle, of that audience. So the point is that this puzzle is uh, actually a common idea. When you see the rook and bishop work together for a, a mate on the back rank like that, that's a, that's a mating pattern that you should be familiar with. And forcing it isn't hard, again, as long as you build this muscle of making sure you always consider all the checks and captures and tempo moves. And for advanced players, even even... Even strong, the strongest players in the world will make blunders and miss and miss opportunities. Of course, not this simple, but it, on, in more advanced scenarios, because of because of failure to, to consider all those options, and it's so it's just a it's the good it's the right habit to try to build. And um, I mean, there really aren't any other checks to consider here. Queen e6 check, I did miss, just missed right away. Honestly, here I didn't really consider any other checks besides queen to e8, uh, because immediately I'm looking at the communication between the rook and the bishop on f8. They're communicating. They're talking to each other. Just got to listen, all right? That's called dynamic pressure. People hear that phrase and they're like, what does that mean? Well, when you have, it's like having a rook on the same file as a queen. Even if there's a pawn in front of it, even if there's pieces in front of it, the rook is still on the same file as the queen. And so you recognize the potential to build on that and the, there will always be opportunities for tactics if it goes neglected. So immediately recognizing the communication of your pieces and where they're lining up together is the first step in always solving these types of puzzles immediately 100% of the time. So hope you uh, appreciate that breakdown of what is sort of a simple tactic. I received some critical feedback in yesterday's YouTube video that I wasn't giving enough basic breakdown of some of these um, beginner principles and why a move like that would be dismissed. So a move like Queen E8 would be dismissed if you were stubbornly not thinking outside the box instead of recognizing the hierarchy of chess is checkmate first holding on the to the queen is second right sometimes if you love her you gotta let her go right because you only miss the the light when it starts to snow i have no idea what he's actually saying in that song is he actually saying to let her go or is he saying he loves her because he let her go like you know the phrase if you love her you gotta let her go and then it's like only miss the light when it starts to snow right right only miss the sun when it starts to snow. That song. Only know you love her when you let her go. Oh, cause you only need the light when it's burning low. And I don't need the snow when it starts to snow. 